us now is the CEO of AIR, Ronnie Plout. Thank you, Ronnie, for being with me. Talk to me more about the design here. Right. Are, is it a car, because it is drivable? Is it a plane? Is it something kind of in between? Well, actually, it's a, it's a, it's a plane. Uh, it's not a car. Uh, we use the term flying car because we, we, think, of, we think automotive. We build it as automotive. Uh, grade and, and uh, from inception in terms of production capabilities, materials, and processes. So mass production, automotive grade. Uh, but you're not going to drive that on the road. Uh, we think that the mix between uh, a thing that you drive on the road and a thing that flies in the sky is a, is a compromise that, uh, that doesn't get you the, to the right places. So it's an aircraft that you can use on a daily basis. You can take off and land vertically, uh, which is very, makes it very practical. Uh, and you can also buy it at an affordable, an affordable price. Is it safe? I mean, would you trust your own mother in, in the cockpit of this thing? Sure. So, so again, uh, thinking about automotive, today the, the car keeps you alive. You know, 15 years ago, about it was the safety level of different cars. Um, uh, aircraft is always something which is dangerous. You need to be a pilot. You need to be a professional. And the, we are bringing the aircraft to the, uh, to the car level in terms of safety, very high redundancy. Uh, you can lose a motor, you can lose a rotor, you can lose a wing. Uh, you can lose one of the main uh, batteries or, or computers. The, the aircraft will keep flying uh, because of simplicity and redundancy and a lot of technology that we are putting into, into the vehicle. Well, is it AI generated? I mean, is it gonna correct people if they turn too sharply in the sky or if they're not generating enough power or lift? I mean, how does the computing system perhaps compensate for human error here? Sure. So, so yes, there is some AI level, but we are working in, in, in both ways. So we have the lower level, which is, which is about uh, simplicity, redundancy, and so forth, and the higher level of AI, which, uh, which basically analyzes what you want through your movement in the stick and translates it to the very, very uh, adapted maneuvers happening in the in the aircraft itself hmm. you're one all computerized of course yeah you're one of, of quite a few now startups that are have these prototypes that are developing uh you know personal flying vehicles hopefully for sale in the next year or two H how much interest yeah. is there already in air one how many pre-order deposits have you had you know from fans of this concept sure so first of all we have pre-orders on our website it's airev.ero uh, we have over 50 units that have already been paid. Deposit was deposited in our in our in our account. Uh, we have uh, uh, resellers <coughs> that have pre-orders of uh, additional 50 units. So we are over 100 now, and this is growing very rapidly, very organically. We are very happy with the progress. Ronnie, even when you're able to deliver them, how can people fly them without a special training or a special license in order to go up in the sky? Um, you know, when you when you drive a car, you get a license, right? When you drive a, when you fly a plane, you get a license. We are aiming for a very low level of training, uh, since there is a lot of responsibility moving uh, uh, from the person to the to the uh, aircraft. Uh, so there is going to be a license. It's not much different than a, than a, the, the basic sports pilot license, which is uh, 15 to 30 hours of practice not very far from your regular driver license. Mm. Ronnie, thanks so much for being with us on i24 News, talking about this emerging market. Great to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much.